All right, media day. We are talking 23-6A and joined by A. Leaf Taylor head coach Sean Gray. Coach, you guys had a playoff squad last year, and it looks like you are bringing back some experience on the defensive side of the ball. Do you feel like that's where your strength's going to be defensively? I definitely feel like the, the defensive line is going to be the strength because that's where most of our returning starters are. Uh, they gained a lot of experience as first-time starters as juniors. Um, we got Samuel Robles, who was an all-district defensive lineman returning. Uh, I'm excited for him. He had a great offseason, great spring. Uh, he actually has a couple schools interested in him. So I'm really excited for him. I think he'll have a chance probably to make the biggest impact on the defense because of his experience and how he went through the offseason spring football. You talk about, we're talking about the defense, but obviously the player that everybody's got their eyes on is, is Chase Jenkins on the offensive side of the ball. And, and, the, and we can talk about the 2,500 yards, but the, the stat that jumps out at me is the one interception. When you know you've got a quarterback out there that's not going to turn that ball over, it's got to be a, a good feeling as an offensive uh, head coach and coordinator for whoever your coordinator is. Well, you know, he, he, takes, he took a lot of pride in, you know, the one interception. And uh, I think that he does a great job of, of being precise and, you know, on what he wants to do. Um, I told him it's not, it's not okay. It's okay to throw more than one interception, though. <laughs> it's okay. But uh, Chase is definitely, he's, he's probably by far one. Of, I think he's one of the most talented athletes in the city, the greater Houston right now. Uh, I'm really excited for him. I think he, he just, touched the surface last year. I think he'll be even better this year because uh, just because of his experience. Last year was his first time. It came in from private school. So this is his first time in uh, in 6A football. And he did well. He wound up, you know, being the first team all district quarterback. Um, the one thing I love about him is he is definitely a, a, a gunslinger. Uh, I know his stats might think that he doesn't take a lot of chances, but he loves throwing that football. And then after that, he's a tremendous athlete who can run and throw at the same time. Um, do I want him to take more chances? Of course. <laughs> and uh, if it if it takes only throwing one interception to you know to win the district championship and you know go as far as we can, I'm with it. I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> yeah, that's a balancing act, right? You want him to take more chances, but you want to take them at the right time. You don't want him to. That's right. Right, that's right. You don't want to try to gun it into some double coverage there. Uh, I guess nah, nah, like that. I got he, he, uh, I think with him, we would have probably would have had a greater, we wouldn't have had a chance to make the playoffs without Chase. Right? He's definitely a, a tremendous asset to our program. And, uh, you know, he's, he's definitely the person that makes everything run. Now, uh, He's one of few returners on the offensive side of the ball. So uh, he does have Brantley to throw it to and a couple other guys that he's used to. But talk about some of the uh, inexperience that you hope grows up quickly on that side of the ball. Well, the first thing would be the offensive line. Uh, we had five seniors last year that started. So the entire offensive line is just graduated and moved on. And, and all those guys have went on to college. So that's, that's a big drop off. Uh, we had a great, I think last year we had a running back that rushed for a thousand yards. You know, he's gone. So we got to replace him. Uh, of course, Tyler King, who was one of the fastest guys in the state of Texas, he's gone. We got to replace him. But the thing that works out for us is uh, Bryson Brandon, who started all 11 games last year, he wound up being the second leading receiver on our team. Uh, he wound up finishing all district in, in, in our district. He's returning. Uh, we have Terrence Nollins, who also started the last, who started pretty much seven games once we got the district. Uh, he started catching on in, the, in towards the later on in the season. Those two guys right there are probably, to be honest with you, those two guys are probably are going to jump off the scene once we get started with the season, along with Chase. Uh, they have a lot of chemistry. Uh, We'll, we'll be young at the receiver. We'll be young at running back. Last year, I, I played a freshman at running back. So he's returning with some game experience. So he'll be a sophomore. Uh, I'm excited for him. But with Chase, it still works out. <laughs> it still going to work out. We'll yeah. make it happen, right? 
So we'll probably, we'll really, the, the, the focal point definitely during preseason will be the offensive line. If, uh, if we can get those guys to, uh, you know, play up the part, then we'll be fine. When you talk about the preseason, uh, what are your three non-district games and what do you hope to get from those games? Uh, we're playing uh, Klein Forest, who one state, you know, they speed. Uh, those guys are we coming back and they have a good group of skilled guys. And I think they got an SEC defensive end guy over there. So that'll be a good test. Uh, we're playing uh, Westside and HISD. We had him on the schedule since I've been there. Uh, Coach Mace is a good friend of mine. He, you know, he, he feels like we had never got a chance to play. So it was always, I played when we was at Fort Ben Bush. So it was always a good rival for me with him. And then uh, we're going to play Fort Ben Marshall. So, you know, they've been to state twice. So in, in order to get ready for our district, which is a pretty tough district, uh, I think it's important for us to play, you know, quality opponents before we get inside our district. So those, I felt like those preseason games would be would give us a definite a definite look of what we need to work on and you know what we can be pretty good at. What you talking about? I, I guess we'll finish up with the district talk. Uh, heck, I'm just going to be blunt. When some of these guys look at this district, they they treat the A Leaf teams like an afterthought, and you guys kind of proved that that's not the case last year. And and you're ready for the come ups. What's it going to do to be a consistent playoff team to knock down some of these teams like Straight Jesuit? and the Parallel teams in Shadow Creek? I think uh, a lot of it is, is it's a balance. I think a lot of it is, is it's a big balance in our district. Uh, from my just, you know, doing the two years here with the COVID and last year, a lot of it is a balance, especially the way every school, you know, you don't have, this is not a all spread off uh, district. You know, you got some people, you got options. Uh, we just had Coach Movement from, uh, from Paytow. He's more of a, downhill guy, Katie guy. So now you bring that in. Uh, um, of course, the A League schools, we kind of versify everything. We got a new coach coming in. Coach uh, Rodriguez is coming in. Um, it's a balanced district because you have some teams that are really good on defense and then you got some teams that are really explosive on offense. So I feel like for us, we have to have balance in order to be able to compete with, with these teams in our district. Of course, you, you got to score points, but you got to be able to hold up as well. So it's kind of a week to week thing. And then for, for me personally, I think it's more of a matchup. It's more of a matchup thing because um, the, the schools are different. You know, you're talking about difference in attendance, uh, difference in number of kids in a program. Uh, I think for the A-League schools, for us, it's, it's just, for when I got here, we're just now getting to the point where everything is normal. Uh, I think this was the first time I got a chance to do all season with the kids. Um, I think that's going to help tremendously. I think um, just going going through the, the the mindset, working out, being able to work with the kids all the time now, I think that'll help us be consistent in trying to make the playoffs. And it doesn't help, you know, it does help when you have a Division One quarterback, you know. Um, uh, programming these kids and being able to have a system put in instilled into where we know what we're doing every year, I think that makes a big difference when it comes to this district. Absolutely. And you definitely won it last year, and I can't wait to see what you guys got for them this year. So, uh, good. thank you for talking with me, man. Good luck this year, and I'm hoping to see you back in the postseason. All right. Appreciate it.